So today I'm going to be taking a look at one of Samsung's lesser known product ranges which is the Galaxy M series, in particular the Galaxy M23 5G. Now for those unaware, the Galaxy M series was introduced as a bit of a response to the growing market of budget devices from the likes of Xiaomi, Huawei and Oppo, primarily aimed at young people with its biggest features being large batteries and multiple cameras. And it's an area that Samsung is hoping to claw back a little bit of business from those other manufacturers. So how does the M23 5G hold up against those competitors? Hopefully you're here to find out. So let's start by talking about the design of the Galaxy M23 5G. We have a very minimalistic back with a bit of branding and an ever so slightly protruding camera bump built into the plastic. I must say that I'm a big fan of this design, quite similar in a way to the kind of S21 and S22 rear. This is helped along even more by this really nice green colour called Deep Green. And the phone is also available in orange, copper and light blue. And I think Samsung did a really great job on the design of this phone. On the bottom you have a single firing speaker, USB-C port which supports 25 watt fast charging, a microphone and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The left you just have your SIM tray, which can house two SIMs as well as a micro SD card. And on the right you have volume buttons and a power button with an integrated fingerprint scanner, which is fast and responsive. So that part, to be honest, is pretty similar to many other budget devices. As for the display, you have a rather sizable 6.6 inch Full HD display with a adaptive 120Hz refresh rate. It's a typical Samsung panel with nice punchy colours and good detail. Outdoor visibility is pretty good, but of course not matching more expensive smartphone displays. Up top you have an 8 megapixel f2.2 selfie camera, which can shoot 1080p video at up to 30 frames per second. It's unfortunate that they didn't put a punch hole cutout instead of the teardrop notch, which would have given it just a slightly more premium and up-to-date look. And photos from the selfie camera are of typical budget 8 megapixel quality, and portrait mode can struggle with busy backgrounds like in this photo, but for the most part they are usable. The bottom bezel is relatively thick however, but this is about right for this budget segment. As for the battery, you have a large 5000 milliamp battery packed inside the Galaxy M23 5G, which is more than enough to get you through a full day of pretty intense use. But in case you do kill it in a day, you are able to charge at up to 25 watts, so that should get you from 0 to 100% in less than 2 hours. Powering the M23 5G is the mid-range Snapdragon 750G. Although getting on a bit, this is more than enough for most users to endure a bit of gaming as well as the usual day-to-day -day activities. Built on an 8 nanometer fabrication, this should also prove pretty power efficient and this is backed up by either 4 or 6 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage being the only option, but as mentioned before, this is expandable. And as for software, the Galaxy M23 5G is running Android 12 with Samsung's One UI version 4.1 on top. So it's nice and up to date running on March 2022 security patch. And lastly, let's take a quick squint at the triple camera system on the back of the A23 5G. Headlined by a 50 megapixel f1.8 primary camera with phase detection autofocus. This does the usual 4-in-1 pixel binning down to 12.5 megapixel images. Quality is about right and expected from a budget device. There's enough detail in most areas of the photo, but finer detail is a bit lost when you zoom in. Scene optimizer boosts the saturation of the photos, so for the most part I had this setting turned off. However, the photos still have a typical Samsung look of boosted colours, and there is a dedicated night mode which does help things out when lighting conditions are less than ideal, just to brighten up the photos and pull out a bit more detail. There's also an 8 megapixel ultra wide which, to be expected, takes lesser quality photos and that narrower f2.2 aperture doesn't help things either. It is nice to see that night mode is supported on the ultra wide camera, making nighttime shots slightly less cringy. And lastly, there's a 2 megapixel macro camera which, to be honest, I don't tend to talk about too much these days because the quality is, is just not great. The main camera does support 4K video at 30fps, but unsurprisingly the ultra wide is capped at 1080p at 30fps. 4K is pretty good, colour reproduction is the same look as from the photos and there's no stabilisation either. General home movies of the kids is fine, but any high action video it won't be very stable. Switching to the ultra wide during video, there's a noticeable shift in exposure due to the narrower lens, but to be fair it still looks good. So that's my look at the Galaxy M23 5G. For around the 250 quid mark, it offers some really nice specs at a low price. You've got a nice big high refresh rate display, a Samsung S22 kind of look on the back, 25 watt fast charging, 5000 milliamp battery, 
and it comes in this really cool deep green colour. So if it's something that you like the look of, unfortunately you have to go on Amazon as it is an Amazon exclusive. So if you want this phone, you've got to go there. But do let me know in the comments what you think of the M23 5G. Is it something that you would consider? If not, let me know. And if you are looking at this, let me know as well. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.